pretest probability of Lyme disease. Eight-year-old Sophia presents with a left knee that has been swollen and mildly painful for three days. Sophia is usually in good health and has not had prior joint pain. She lives in Pennsylvania and enjoys playing outside. She does not recall any tick bites, and her mother does not remember seeing any ticks on Sophia. Her vital signs are normal, and she has no rash. Sophia's doctor examines the left knee and notes a large effusion, limited range of motion, and associated erythema, warmth, and mild tenderness. Sophia can still ambulate, but with a limp. Sophia's presentation might be consistent with Lyme arthritis, and her doctor wonders if she should test for Lyme disease. Before testing for Lyme disease, clinicians should ask themselves two questions. First, what is the pretest probability? And second, what is the disease stage? Pretest probability is defined as the likelihood of disease before a diagnostic test result is known. In other words, what is the clinical probability that a particular patient has Lyme disease? Three questions can help you make this determination. First, has the patient been in an area where Lyme disease is common? Second, was the patient likely exposed to ticks? Third, does the patient have symptoms that are characteristic of Lyme disease? When the answer to all three questions is yes, pretest probability is moderate to high and testing might be helpful. When the answer to one or more of these questions is no, pretest probability is lower. A patient with low pretest probability for Lyme disease has an increased risk of a false positive test result, which can lead to misdiagnosis. Misdiagnosis can result in unnecessary treatment and patient anxiety, as well as failure to treat the true cause of illness. Sophia is from Pennsylvania, a state where Lyme disease is common. Even though she doesn't remember a tick bite, she might have been exposed to ticks given her active lifestyle. Sophia's acute knee swelling is characteristic of Lyme arthritis, a manifestation of late disseminated Lyme disease. Therefore, Sophia has a moderate to high pretest probability for Lyme disease. For patients with a moderate to high pretest probability, diagnostic testing might be helpful. However, the disease stage strongly affects the sensitivity of serologic testing. The recommended two-step serologic test for Lyme disease is less sensitive at early stages of disease, such as when a patient presents with an erythema migraines rash, which on average presents only seven days after infection because serologic testing depends on the detection of antibodies, which can take several weeks to develop after initial infection. Because test sensitivity is poor for patients with erythema migraines, a manifestation of early localized Lyme disease, treatment should be prescribed without performing diagnostic testing. The sensitivity of Lyme disease serology is excellent for Lyme arthritis, a manifestation of late disseminated Lyme disease. Testing could be very helpful in Sophia's case. A positive two-step serologic test for Lyme disease would support a full course of antibiotic treatment for Lyme arthritis. A negative test would suggest an alternate diagnosis and should prompt the clinician to consider additional diagnostic evaluation. Learn more about Lyme disease testing while earning free continuing education credits visit www.cdc.gov slash Lyme slash healthcare.